Okay, this video is option C, freshwater IB Geo, and the syllabus point is hydrograph characteristics, and you have to know lag time, peak discharge, base flow, and natural influences on hydrographs, including including geology and seasonality. Okay, so this is a hydrograph, and it basically shows how the discharge of a river changes around the time of a storm event. Okay. So one thing to just keep in mind is that water enters the river through these main um, processes. So direct precipitation, so rain or hail or sleet or snow going straight into the river channel, surface runoff, groundwater flow and through flow. That's how it gets into the channel. Okay, so let's look at the hydrograph graph <laughs> and the main features. Okay. So basically, the y-axis shows precipitation in millimeters, and then the x-axis shows the time passing by, basically. So here we have the rainfall event, and every hydrograph has the same features. So you have the precipitation levels, and then you have peak rainfall, which is very important. So keep in mind peak rainfall. And then here you have the actual flow of the river. Um, and that's actually measured in, um, what's it called? Uh, like the river discharge in cumex or cubic meters, or meters cubed actually. Um, and that's what measures the flow of the water in the river. Okay, so this is showing us the discharge. So, okay, I'm trying to make it like more simple. So I'm going to discuss it by time okay so first of all we have the rainfall event and then we have the peak rainfall here and then as that's going on the discharge of the river is kind of it's not really increasing yet but the rainfall is occurring but it hasn't really the the discharge hasn't really responded to the rainfall like it hasn't reached it yet but then this rising limb occurs and the rising limb is basically when this rainfall starts to enter the channel so then the discharge starts to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase until it reaches peak discharge again this is a very important point because the time between the peak discharge and the peak rainfall is known as the lag time and the lag time is very important when you kind of make analysis points in terms of the hydrograph and how maybe urbanization and other things could affect it which we will discuss in another video Okay, and then after peak discharge, you get the falling slash recessional limb, which is basically when the discharge falls again, when the rainfall event has kind of maybe like passed and it's, you know, things are calming down again. Um, and something that's also very important on the graph is this idea of bankful discharge. So this is the height at which a flood would occur. So this is different for every river. But there's a certain dis- Whoa. What the heck? No. What the okay, sorry. I don't know if that showed up on the screen, but it's okay. Okay, so there's a certain, like, discharge in- When you pass that discharge, like, for here, it's like, I don't know, like, eight, 19, 18-ish cumex. Um that means there's a flood like it's past the maximum capacity of the river channel so it's like going above and onto the floodplain and everything and okay the final thing about the hydrograph is this idea of base flow so that's the flow that's like already in the channel through flow which is obviously um, water that's going through the soil um, and then we have storm runoff which is like surface runoff basically so again these are ways that the water enters the river so you have your base flow coming from the groundwater store into the channel through flow from the soil water store possibly into the groundwater store and then to the base flow or straight into the channel um and then you have storm runoff and then you have precipitation which is like the main thing here because this is a storm this is peak rainfall it's like in input Okay, now we're going to look at seasonality and geology. So what can affect the hydrograph? Vegetation, if it's coniferous or deciduous, because that impacts interception. And if you have more interception, then your um, rising limb would likely be 
less would be shallower um, because the kind of rainfall can be intercepted by the vegetation and then that would possibly also lead to a lower peak discharge and a larger um, lag time so that would reduce the like intensity and magnitude of the flood temperature so you have winter versus summer and that impacts snow melt so if you have more snow melt then it's more likely that your flooding magnitude will be larger and you have larger peak discharge um shorter well i don't know about lag time but actually i don't know if it would impact that actually it would more impact probably the antecedent flow like the flow that's already in the river because when it's summertime and the snow melt the river channel will actually have a larger volume of water um, or it will tend to have that but also obviously climate change can impact this then we have the type of precipitation so some precipitation might not directly enter the river such as snow and ice and sleet because it it's like it's not liquid so it's not going to flow as easily as runoff into the um channel or it won't really seep into the soil water and groundwater sto store as easily and then we have the permeability of the ground so obviously if you have more porous rock or permeable grounds then the rising limb is likely to be shallower and the peak discharge is possibly going to be smaller um okay wait i like paused it and i forgot what i was saying but Okay, yeah, the antecedent flow can basically make the flooding more, um, I guess, strong. Because if, for example, it was raining the day before the flood and then the, the grounds are already saturated, then they can't store any more water. So then you would have like a steeper rising limb, shorter lag time, and like the flood would probably be, probably be worse. And then we have amount of precipitation that impacts the discharge and amount of evaporation and transpiration um, because, for example, if you have more evaporation and transpiration, then it's likely that the water received from precipitation will be like um, made into an output and thus it might not actually contribute to this discharge, but I feel like that's quite a minor factor.